Uh huh. Yeah. Woo! Not here. Woo. Not here. I didn't mean here. I meant like afterwards, maybe at the bar or something. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, uh, this is a project that I'm working on. Not really. Uh, this is a LARF that I tore out of another project that I was working on. Uh, literally to answer the question of how easy could I make provider development. Um, so that's what you're here to learn about today. And again, if this doesn't interest you and you decide halfway through you'd like to go see Jason Morgan, uh, he's upstairs. I don't mind. In fact, I might do that uh, 10 minutes in. We don't know. Uh, my, name is Jim, <laughs> my name is Jim Christopher. I'm just kidding. Thank you for being here. I really, I really do appreciate you coming to this talk. I know like, I'm very niche. I do really weird things. And it's just nice to know that you guys appreciate the weirdness. So. Uh, I'm Jim Christopher. I am a curriculum director at Pluralsight. Uh, I was an independent software developer for years. It's math. I can't do it. Um, and um, and at last uh, last November, uh, Pluralsight hired me on uh, as their curriculum director. So um, it's a big change of venue for me, right? I don't I don't write as much code anymore. So the projects that I'm talking about now are um, they don't get worked on as much as they used to. Um, but I love it. I love working there and I love the people I'm working with. And if you have any questions about what you're seeing here or anything else, if you're interested in talking about authoring with Pluralsight, by all means, uh, reach out to me at one of these, one of these contact thingies and I'll, uh, I will connect you with the right people and answer whatever questions you have. Uh, I am an MVP for PowerShell. I was just renewed, yay, so uh, through uh, 2016. Uh, and that's that. So um, I love providers, right? That's kind of my thing. I've always loved them. I thought, you know, even back when there were no providers, when it was just Linux and everything on Linux works that way, like, well, how do you access the serial port? Well, you mount it. It's a file system. That's kind of cool, right? And, um, and then when PowerShell came out, it was called Monad, and I found these things, and like, like I love providers, right? Uh, and so why, though? Why, why, what do I find attractive about providers? Uh, and there's a couple of things that I think are um, kind of really really broad, really really sort of broad strokes uh, about the benefits that a provider will, will give you. And the first one is that hierarchies are everywhere, right? Um, this is just sort of the way we, we organize things in our head. Um, you know, like if you think about a file system, it's a drive, it's got folders, folders have folders and files in them. Um, they contain each other. This is sort of a natural thing for us, or natural way for us to think about things. Uh, and that, that system is found everywhere, right? This kind of containment is found everywhere. So you have, um, other scenarios, right? Like you have like something like a like a SQL server that's got databases in it and tables, and the tables have records in them, and that's another natural hierarchy. One of the benefits, though, of a provider is you have these addressable objects. Right? We have paths that we can use to address a particular object inside of that hierarchy, and it sort of always references that object. It's kind of like a, like if you're a developer and you know what uh, like a REST API, like the whole idea behind REST, um, you know that that URI that you use to address an object inside of that REST interface. So like the providers kind of offer the same level of addressability, right? and I find that very attractive. Um, I also think they're a great way to uh, have interaction uh, with, with these hierarchies. So um, one, of the, one of the provider projects I published was called Studio Shell, and it, and it takes the Visual Studio SDK, which is a very sort of, you know, all-in approach. You've got to learn this whole object model um, and plan out what you're going to do. Uh, and sort of turns it on its head and makes it this interactive thing on the shell where you can go, hey, Visual Studio, I, I need to do something with the debugger or you know, with, with the current stack frame, but I have no idea what the SDK looks like. But you can go into the provider and just kind of CD down into the debugger, into the stack frame, and look at it. See, well, what do you got? What can I do? Right, so it, it's not a priority learning, but just sort of being in the moment and having the shell tell you, you know, these, these are the things that I can offer you. Uh, again, that's another thing that I really love. And last is simplicity, right? Uh, I mentioned REST APIs. Um, like, I'm working with REST APIs at Pluralsight now, and they're like, you know, 50 pages of documentation and URLs and, you know, just tons and tons of objects. And it, it's not hard, right? But it's a lot. There's only 10 commands in PowerShell, right, that work with providers. And there's a little bit more. But that's it. These are all the things you can do, right? You can get things, you can set things, you can create things and destroy them. And that's it. Right, so I love the simplicity, and and I always, I find that you know if this covers ninety percent or eighty percent of the problem, that I would like to go this route, right, because of all the other benefits that I'm that I'm getting out of it. Uh, so the problem, though, like providers are great, they're fun, but providers are hard. Uh, has, has anyone implemented a I mean, not you guys, but has anybody implemented a provider uh, in this room besides me? 
you have. Uh, what did you think of the experience? It's a pain in the ass. All right? Wait, wait. And that was using your provider for that. Exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that pain in the ass in a second. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, the, the, yes, I, I'm sorry, I'm repeating for the microphone. Uh, Chris said, yes, I created a provider. It was a pain in the ass, and I used your software to do it, Jim. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, but they are. They're very hard, right? Um, and you have options available to you, right? Um, it, you know, so there's kind of like this matrix that I have in my head about how providers are developed, right? So you, you know, first you pick what, what platform do you want to implement them in? Do you want to, do you want to use like .NET, C Sharp, or do you want to use PowerShell? Uh, and then once you've made that choice, do you want to go like the hard route or do you want to go the easy route, right? So um, there's a PowerShell SDK and that's where you start, right? That's where everyone starts when they're, when they're going to make a provider. Um, again, not complicated. There's a lot of stuff to learn in there. There's a lot of stuff to get right. Um, there's a lot of sort of cognitive modeling that you have to do around, you know, thinking about how a provider works. Um, that really is not going to transfer over to like other areas of your life very easily. Uh, so there's that, right? And then a slightly easier approach is this project I talked about last year uh, called P2F, PowerShell Provider Framework. Was anybody in that talk actually? Yeah, a couple of you. Um, so I actually, I actually gave like a blurb at the end of that talk about this project I'm talking about now, right? And I don't know if you guys remember the syntax I showed you about how stupid easy I thought this could be, and I actually achieved that. So I'm actually really, really happy about that. But yeah, so P2F like wraps up a lot of the cognitive dissonance inside of the PowerShell SDK and tries to make it easier and lets you focus on like the business problem you're trying to solve, right? But then you, when you, if you want to work in just PowerShell, you don't want a compiler, you just want something, you just want to hack out some code in the ISC and have something that works, right? There's a couple of options. You have the script provider. Uh, Oshin Grihan published this. This is available on CodePlex. I've got a URL. I'll show it to you at the end. Um, and, and again, this is almost a literal translation of the SDK, right? So if, if you um, look at the APIs that are available in the SDK, the script provider is almost identical to that. There's a couple of niceties in there, but he's exposing all of the features uh, from the PowerShell SDK inside of that provider, right? And then you have what we're talking about today, which is Simplex, right? Which, um, again, is meant to be remarkably easier than any other option that's available to you. Uh, so what's the, what's the expression? With great power comes great... What? Debugging. Uh, debugging. Yeah, I was going to say uh, with great power comes a great loss of feature. But um, no, yeah, so right, so things get easier, right? Um, and I kind of mapped this out, you know, again, to show you, like, the PowerShell SDK is the hardest way to go. Um, uh, and simplex would be the easiest in my mind. Uh, but you know, the thing that you give up there is, is sort of features and controls, right? Uh, if, you, if you go into the PowerShell SDK, it's carte blanche, right? You have access to all the APIs, all of the commandlets, all of the parameters on the commandlets, and you can access ACLs and interact with the PowerShell runtime. And so as you get closer and closer to what we're talking about today, you just lose things. Uh, and we'll talk about specifically what you're losing if you, uh, if you drink the simplex Kool-Aid. Uh, Actually, right now. Let's talk about that right now. Um, so, yeah, Simplex is limited in comparison to everything else that you have available to you. Um, it's like, first and foremost, is that the providers inside of Simplex are read only. That is, you can pull data out of them. Um, it, you can't really put data back in. Sort of, right? There's a couple of, there's a couple of scenarios where that actually isn't true. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to show you in the demos uh, what I mean by that. Um, the other thing is that um, Simplex just sort of swallows a lot of the advanced parameters and features that are available in providers. Uh, I literally just said, you know, what are the most common scenarios that I use providers for, that I see people be using providers for, the, you know, the dozen of us, the dozen of us who actually do it. Um, and let's focus on that. Right? Uh, so a lot of the advanced stuff, like, you know, credentials. No, there's no credentials support inside of this, right? You have to, you have to roll something on your own. Uh, and they're slow. Some Plex providers are, are slow in comparison to like a, an SDK-based provider. And that's, that's actually saying something, right? The, the, the providers are not meant to be speedy things. Um, but when you get to the level of Simplex, uh, it's, there's a noticeable difference. Um, and, you know, the last one, Simplex has issues, so I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's, not, it's not something I have dumped a lot of active effort into. I've got it working for the things I use it for, and then I just kind of leave it alone for months and months. Um, you know, and like I said, you know, there's been, is there a question? Yeah. 
So yeah. these uh, limits, are these limits uh, intrinsic or just incidental, like this version? Most, most of these are incidental. Yeah. Like this, the slowness thing is, eh, you, I think I could speed it up, but there's a lot of indirection and there's only so much you can do there. Um, I could expose the advanced parameters. I just haven't figured out a, a clean way to do that that's, that's not overwhelming, you know? Yeah, the, the read only. So actually, Oshin and I are talking about that. Once we go through the syntax, I'll touch back on that. Um, but yeah, he has some really, Oshin and I have exchanged some really good ideas about how to make that happen. Um, and I'll talk about that. Thank you, Jeffrey. Right, anybody else? Any other questions? Which, by the way, ask questions as we go. That's how I work. Nope. Uh, yeah, so what are the benefits, right? If, if there are these limits, what are, the, what are the benefits? Well, the first benefit is that the providers just work, right? There's no guessing, right? There's no like, you know, I did all this code and now it's sort of not working. So, yeah, it is. If, if, if all you want is the 80%, you're done, right? If you can write a little PowerShell code, you're done. Uh, the other is it's free, capital F free, uh, and it's open source. It's available right now on GitHub. You can actually go there and download it. You can pull the source and build it if you want. Um, there's also, it's being built on App Bear, so you can just download the latest module and start using it uh, right now, actually. And it's liberally licensed. I don't care, literally, I don't care what you do with it. Uh, it's, it's officially licensed under MIT, it unofficially do what you want with it. I'm publicly stating that. If you want to take the code and call it your own, I don't care. <laughs> have, a, have a good time. Have a good time. Um, so any questions before we talk about actually using this behemoth? Nope. Uh, all right. So let's talk about using Simplex. Uh, we're going we're gonna to walk through a couple of things, a couple of uh, scenarios. The first, we're just going to take a look at the basic DSL that the module defines for um, creating a provider. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to expand on that to actually leverage some common PowerShell features like functions and variables uh, inside of there. And then um, and finally, there's, there's a, sort of an advanced provider integration thing that happens with, with Simplex. Um, I call it provider proxying. It's, it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. So, um, so here's the syntax, right? This is a fully featured PowerShell provider. Uh, it doesn't return anything right now except it's got two folders in it, right? Um, there's three keywords to the DSL, root, folder, and script. And that's it. That's all there is, right? So the root keyword is meant to say, hey, this is the root of a drive or the root of the provider hierarchy. Folder is a folder. It contains folders and scripts, right? And a script is some bit of PowerShell that's going to dump objects out. Um, that's it. That's all there is to it, right? So is that stupid simple? Uh-huh. Yeah. Jason? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, let's, uh, let's look at some, let me, let's actually look at some examples. So all of the examples that I'm showing you here are actually, uh, they're inside of the source code on GitHub, so you can pull them down and look at them. We'll actually be manipulating some of these today. Uh, this is a uh, fully featured provider defined in the simplex syntax that defines an events folder. And inside of that events folder, it contains three other folders, uh, errors, warnings, and infos. Each one of those contains the last 20 events from the event log that match that, that category, right? Um, right, so you're just kind of looking at this. If you know a little PowerShell, if you know what get event log does, you sort of understand what this is going to look like, right? Um, so how do you use it? Well, uh, you know, first thing is you got to pull the simplex module in, right? Um, that's it. That's all that happens. Uh, and then so the next thing that we have to do, which by the way, I didn't really point out, um, you know, you'll notice this is just a PS1 file, right? It's, it's really just a PowerShell script. That's all it is, right? Uh, and so once I'm, once I'm, where to go? There it is. So once I pulled in that uh, uh, the simplex module, the next thing I need to do is to create a PowerShell drive, right? And um, well, here let me show you first off, right? Uh, so the simplex provider is loaded. You can see it listed down there. Um, and what you do is you use new PS drive, right? You do for all all uh, providers. And um, I'm going to give the drive a name. I'm going to call it DSL because that's the name of the file. It doesn't have to be. I'm just trying to keep things. Uh, straight in my head. I have to tell it which provider I'm using and the provider's name is Simplex. And the final required parameter is the root parameter. Um, 
And this I'm going to set to the uh, to the path to that file, to that DSL.ps1 file, right? So uh, I'm I've got a, I'm using the automatic PWD variable here. What is that? Yeah, the current directory. So I'm actually in the examples directory for the simplex source code. Uh, so when that resolves, uh, it'll actually translate out to like the fully qualified path to that script file. Right. right so yeah, it comes back and says, hey, here's your drive. Here's your DSL drive. Um, and uh, yep, there it is. It's it's actually listed in there too. So so the drive exists. It's in there. Uh, and it's at this point, it's a fully featured navigation provider. I can actually CD into the drive, and if I look in there, if I do a DIR, there's the events folder, right? Uh, and again, you know, if you look back to the actual uh, DSL, that's literally what I asked it to do. It's like I want a folder that's uh, named events. Oops. And um, what's the line noise at the beginning? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so Jeffrey's asking, let's see the by the uh, microphone. Jeffrey's asking what this line noise is at the beginning. The, uh, looks like sort of some weird encoding. And, and that, that is exactly what it is. It's an encoding that's telling you what you can do with that thing. Uh, so how many commandlets are there in a provider? Yeah. About 10. Uh, each one of those represents a different commandlet and whether or not supported at that node. So we have D is a directory. You can, you can get child item on it, CD into it. Plus means you can add things. Minus means you can take things away. Um, there's get, set, invoke, clear, remove, all those, all those things. So that's just like sort of a very shorthand way of saying here's what you can do. Uh, and again, this is that's part of P2F. It just works, right? P2F offers that support. Simplex is built on P2F, so it, it just works. Um, so we can see the into events, right? And, I, and again, I can tell because of the the, uh, the little encoding there. And if I do a DIR on that, there's the three folders that I defined before. And you'll notice that. The type of the events folder is a folder, and the type of the these other ones at the bottom, error warnings and infos, are it's called a script. Again, that matches what I what I showed you in the DSL. Uh, and the, you know the real trick, if I actually CD into um, let's go into infos, and I do a DIR, I actually get back events from the event model. Right. Uh, so so that's the big picture, right? I wrote how many lines. And that's dynamic. That's so another event log. Yeah, comes it, in. it's dynamic. Yeah, so it, every time I ask it to dir those info events, it's just going to go to the event log. It's actually going to come up here and run whatever code you have. Yeah, this info script to to get that information and spit it back out. Um, yeah, so I have 17 lines of PowerShell code, and I have a fully featured navigation provider. Um, I can't tell you how many lines of C sharp code that would have been. I just can't. Right? Even if I was using P2F, that's a lot of work. It would take me. Well, it would take me about an hour. Um, this, this, I think, any of us in here could do once you understand the basic syntax in a couple of minutes. Right? So, um, so there was um, a couple other things I want to show you. So I, you know, I mentioned before, you know, Jeffrey brought up the. Um, so how do you use this against a REST API then? How do you use this against a REST API? Have you used it? Uh, yeah. So there's a magic session that I wasn't supposed to give on Wednesday that I'm giving on Wednesday. And um, it's basically about it's it's the, the hacking I've done at Pluralsight to try to integrate some of their tooling choices. And if you come to that nine something a.m. in this room, uh, I can show you how I'm using this. Yeah. What what commands are in the module? Uh, it's an excellent question. So let's do do, do a git command module simplex. Those three. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, and if you forget, you know, if you really if you forget what script does, you're gonna have to spell it right. Right? There's there's actually help in there, and there's examples. Um, right? It's not not very complete, but I don't know how much else I need to put in there. Right? <laughs> uh, so yeah. So you know, one of the things that um, that I want to point out, like so, one one of the one of the Things that a provider does when it returns an object to you, it, it gives it like a what they think we call a child name or an item name. Um, and right now, instead of simplex, if I if I come in here and I do a uh, let's do a select ps child name, right? So this this ps child name is this is something that's used by the provider to sort of identify an object, right? And right now, it's just coming back as like the string version of that event log object. It's not very helpful. Um, so there's, and there's actually a way around that. I can actually come into the script 
And uh, there's, a, there's a parameter you can add to the script notes called ID field. And I just want to say I want to use the, the index parameter as the child name, right? <coughs> and so once I do that, um, in fact, let me go ahead and I'll add that. <coughs> I'll then save that. I'll remove uh, the PS drive. Nope. What I call it DSL? Yeah. Oh, I'm on it. I should probably get off it before I. The. You ever heard of the history eraser button? Oops. There we go. All right. And I'll just go ahead and recreate it. Uh, and then if I see DSL events, infos, and run that command there and then they see now it's using the index name to right so now, now all those objects are addressable like if I wanted to refer to that event I could just use the path to that event log entry and it would just work yeah see cat uh, no you can't <laughs> um, but all right, so you know, to Jeffrey's point, and you know, something he brought up earlier, um, you know, it, it's the, the providers read only sort of. Like you're operating against event log entries here, and so if you wanted to run new item in here, like you would expect to create a new event log entry, right? Um, it doesn't really support that yet. Um, like and like I said, Oshin and I are trying to talk about how to make that happen. Um, uh, you know, the, and the idea is to do something along the lines of, of like this, you know, uh, just create a new item parameter that accepts a script block that, you know, takes in just a generic input, a string, nothing fancy, right? And then you sort of figure out how to get the event log entry in there or whatever it is you're going to do. Um, and so I keep using this phrase sort of, right? It sort of doesn't support new item. It sort of doesn't support those things. And the reason why I'm saying that is because th those, those commandlets are actually supported. They just don't do what you think they do. Um, let me go back. Let me go back a level, right? So, um, you know, we talked about the encoding uh, earlier, the little squigglies at the front of the line, and I told you that plus means you can add new item. You can do a new item at that location. Um, so, like, if I go back to the root, do a dir, right? So we can add new items to to events. We can add new items to the root of the drive. What do you think is going to happen if I do a new item inside of events? Create a new log. New event log. You think it's going to create a new event log? That's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to create, so I can do something like, let me go into a, let me do a new item. Uh, I'll do a name, um, told you, right? Uh, type, we'll call it uh, script. And for the value, um, uh, you know, I'll give it a real name. We'll give it uh, something that sounds useful. Processes, right? So inside of the value, we'll just do a get process. Right. And so now when I do a, a DIR inside of that drive, there's now a processes folder. What do you think is going to happen if I go in there? If I DIR my processes, I get back a list of the processes that are running on my machine, right? But it's dev proc. I'm sorry? It's dev proc. Yes. Well, the Linux guy's got the joke. Yes, yeah, no, I, thank you for dating myself. Um, all right, that's the basic syntax, right? It's a little bit of structure around your PowerShell, and all of a sudden it's hierarchical, and it just works, right? Um, so, any other questions about this before I move on? This is a couple other things I want to show you. Nope. All right. Uh, so this is just a PowerShell script. All right. Now is my goal is to just make it runnable. Like I could actually go. I keep. I don't use the ISC that much, unfortunately, and you guys can probably tell. Like I can actually execute that script. Right. Um, I can run the DSL script with simplex loaded, and it'll actually return an object that represents that hierarchy to me. Right? It's the same object that the provider behind is using to navigate everything and find all your objects, but it's just a script. You can just run it. Uh, and since it's just a script, you can use the PowerShelly things you're already using every day to do everything else, right? So here's the same provider uh, defined uh, using the same structure, you know, same folders, same scripts, except now all the scripts are referencing a common function. right? Uh, again, you know, it's just a function. It's just PowerShell. It just works. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and show you. Do another new PS drive. We'll call this one F. PSP is simplex. And I want function 
functions.ps1. Whoops. Oh, yeah, spelling. Functions are fun. Uh, yeah, and so if I cd into f and do a dir and cd into events, uh, errors. Wearers. Wearers. Yeah, right. it still just works, right? But I just made the provider, like the code's a little cleaner now. Right, the whole point of that is that, you know, it's not, it's not that rote, big, long thing that you saw. You could actually use the things you already know and love about PowerShell inside of these things, and it just works, right? Um, and those are just the regular, again, because your function is returning event logs, those are the regular event log objects. Yeah. 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 So it's the same things you know and love, right? Um, uh, so here's another one. Uh, you can actually, um, in this one I'm using variables. And again, like a lot of people who started using Simplex wanted to do like generative providers. Like they wanted a dynamic list of script nodes based on like some data that was coming in or something. Um, so that's what I did here. It's, again, this is the same provider. I'm just basing it off of a list. Uh, I defined three strings that define the types of, of uh, event logs I want to look at, right? Uh, and then the only trick right here at the very bottom, you'll notice under the script node, I have a get new closure method call in the script block, and that's to actually sort of dereference that type. You know, we're iterating through the types, and I want to dereference that the value for that type when that script block is defined, as opposed to later when it's when it's not. Is that accurate? It's beautiful. All right, thanks. Um, but that's, that's the only trick, right? And again, I'm, if there's an easier way I can find to do that, I will do it, but that's <coughs> one method call. That, that says, if you just had the script block, then dollar sign type would get evaluated each time you ran it. Yes. What you want to do is you want to evaluate it right now. Yes. And so that's why you do the get enclosure. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, and again, what you know, the result here is, you know, because of the for each, I, I generate three script nodes, and it's the same provider we had before, right? But you know, the difference is if this, if I was basing this on like some data in a file, uh, or you know, I wanted to add, you know, success audits or something, I could just easily just add that in there and it would magically show up. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't want to run this again because there's, there's nothing interesting that happens. It's the same thing, right? Uh, do you trust me that it works? Yeah, all right. Uh, so the last thing I want to show you, um, the last thing I want to show you is um, this sort of advanced provider integration. Uh, so I have, uh, here's another simplex provider. It's got one folder named docs, um, and that returns the contents of my documents folder. Um, so that's it. Like, do you guys understand what this is, the, the intention? Yeah? You, you said folder, but it's, it looks when you can type script. Yeah, so when I say folder, I'm sorry, in a, I should just use the word container. Like in provider lingo, container is a thing that has things in it, right? Like a folder. Um, script is a container. The objects in the script are items in, in the provider lingo. Uh, all right, so let's, uh, let's, let's mount that bad boy. We'll create a new PS drive, and uh, we'll call this one P. I don't think I have a P drive, and uh, we'll call it, well, we're using simplex, and the root is, again, current path, providers, is it provider or providers? Providers dot PS1. All right, so I have a P drive. Um, let's CD into P. Uh, that almost sounds dirty, All right? Do a DIR, and there's there's my docs folder, right? So what am I going to see when I go into docs? Well, what? Remember? What? My my documents, yeah, like my my contents, my document stuff. All right, so there it is. Um, there's all the folders in my documents folder, right? right? The interesting thing that happens here, though, and I, and that this this actually happened by accident. I didn't mean for this to happen. There was a I stripped Simplex out of another project called Polaris, which was I didn't know what to do with it. Um, it was it was a PowerShell integration for Windows Explorer, right? So you have like the drive list over here, and I wanted to be able to define those inside of PowerShell, and that's kind of where the Simplex DSL came out. Um, but one of the interesting things that I did that I didn't realize worked until <laughs> until I got over here. Uh, in simplex was the fact that you could you could reference an object from another provider and it would just sort of proxy all of the features of that object into the new provider so like when I, I'm looking at here and I'm looking at like the Windows PowerShell folder is part of the file system provider it's on another drive um, right now I'm on my simplex based drive but I can actually CD 
into my Windows PowerShell folder, which is on another provider. This is actually something that you've never been able to do with providers. They don't really support like the cross provider functionality. Um, and it's like, I'm not saying there's a lot you can do with it at this point. Um, but uh, but like, I can literally treat the file system provider like it was part of this, this drive that I just defined, right? It just sort of, everything gets proxied over and it just sort of works. Uh, and so, um, you know, one of the one of the questions can you can you do a cat on the um, uh, on the event log? No, you can't. But since the file system provider supports it, you can do a get content or a cat on like my profile, right? Uh, again, spelling matters, right? So and it just works, right? Um, so, um, but that's that's sort of like the the advanced proxying feature if you. If you, if you want to use, like if you want to reference part of the file system and part of the registry, you can actually combine them into like one provider. Um, again, which brings up this really interesting notion of being able to interoperate between them. Um, one of the things that Polaris did, which I thought was really helpful, was that it allowed you, like there was a, anytime you're moving from some drive, if it was network neighborhood or your registry or whatever, to another <coughs> drive, there was a, sort of a translation you went through that basically asked, how do you want this to look as a file? Right? What is, if this was a, a, a file, binary text, I don't care. If you're going to write it to disk, what would it look like? Uh, and I'm thinking of employing something similar here. So like if you mounted you know, the registry and uh, you know, your home drive in the same simplex provider and you said, okay, I want to copy that registry key to my home drive, that it would know how to do that. Right? That there would be a system in place for you to specify how that should happen. Uh, certificates are another one. Like it's great. I love I love working with their certificate drive. Sometimes I just want a cert file, right? Um, and there's no really easy way to do that in PowerShell because the providers are are split. Yeah. So you know you got cert drives and HKLM do the registry. Could I use Simplex to uh, uh, use PSRP and mount a remote uh, registry or cert drive locally and navigate it? Um, I don't I don't see why not. Um, the only it's trick. Simple. Like if I was going to do like um, if I was going to do something like that, I mean, I'll like, like I said, there's no there's no credential support, right? So all the credentials would have to be coded in here somewhere. But again, this isn't for like this isn't something I'm going to deploy. This isn't something for everyone. This is something that's really for me, right? I mean, I use Simplex a lot for like log collation. I got event logs, and I've got these application text logs I need, and IIS logs, and I I don't remember where they all are. So I write a provider that just sort of gives me all of them. I can say I can literally like you know, CD my logs, DIR, recurse, find all the things that look like this. Right? That's what I want. I just want a declarative. I'm looking for the error that occurred around this time. I don't know where it's defined. It's in one of those logs. Go find it for me. That, that's what I use it for. But yeah, to answer your question, if I was going to do this like on a remote computer, uh, no. Get what's what was the name of the command that you? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I mean, literally, whatever command you put in there, yeah, and then the credentials, it would actually. Um, I mean, it's interactive with the prompts, or if you're using it interactively, it'll come back and ask you for the credentials, right? It's just it just works. It's all operating in the same space. Yeah, so you might have a little command, but then could you go? Could you navigate underneath it? Oh, I so you want to create like like children? You want to create yeah. like containers inside of a script? Um, you would need a session <coughs> object maintained somewhere in there. Yeah, I like I don't know how to I wouldn't know how to do that off the top of my head, but yeah, I mean basically like if you were if I was going to do something similar to say what I did here where uh, I'm just I'm iterating over like a list of computer names, defining like a script node for each of them and then maybe inside of that script node. I mean I don't you know that's a actually a really good question. No, yeah, that won't work. Never mind. I was going to say, can you return a script node inside of a script node, which is a neat idea, but I don't think that would work. Um, but yeah, so I guess I guess that that is another big limitation I hadn't actually considered. Is like once you sort of achieve their level of script, eh, you're kind of done. You're, you're at items at that point. There's no containers, but uh, unless they're coming from another provider. So have a simplex provider. <laughs> Point it at the invoke command and then call it from another one, and then all of a sudden you've got that. Wow. I'm going to have to write that down, actually. Um, 
Yeah. Some pester tests that. Should write some pester tests around that. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we got about five minutes uh, for questions. <coughs> if anybody else has any questions, um, when you were back in the with the file system stuff, yeah. So if you did new item there, oh yeah, uh, like so here I'm in I'm in my PowerShell thing. If I do new item, type is file um, name is uh, Jeff. Is it R F R E Y or R Y? E R Y. On, on the right way. Oh okay. Uh, Jeffrey's question dot txt. Uh, value is yes, uh, and then so that created under your PowerShell, wherever yeah. the current location was. Yeah, yeah. So this will be my home directory, my documents, Windows PowerShell. Yeah. So again, that the 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 provider things just get proxied. If you see, you're suddenly working on the file system, it just figures it out and, and does what it needs to do. Um, so it does it because the the targets are for the provider itself. Yeah, exactly. So when like the simplex at the simplex level, if you ask for an object and it comes back and it looks at the object and says, "This looks like a provider object. It's got all the right properties on it and everything else," um, it just sort of it makes a copy of those parameters and applies new ones that apply to the provider. Right? I don't have any control over that. But when you hand that object back, it looks again and says, I'm, well, "You're trying to do a new item on this." It, when it goes to resolve the path, um, it uses the original path to the to the object not the simplex path. So once it resolves to a certain level in simplex, it just knows like, yeah, I, I shouldn't be dealing with this. This is a file system thing. So I'm going to proxy all of the all of the commands over to the other provider. So you can probably create registry in the same way, local, local machine? I'm sorry? You can probably create registry entries on the local machine the same way? Yeah, you know, the question is, can you create registry entries the same way? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's why the provider's there. So. Um, all right, so stupid simple or can I dumb it down some more? <laughs> no? All right. All right. Um, any other questions? All right. While you guys are thinking, I will go ahead and throw this back up. Oh, I hit the wrong one. I'm assuming all the little uh, symbols are all documented somewhere. The little symbols? The symbols for like for the D, the plus, the E. Yes. The yeah, they're actually. I should put them inside of the uh, inside of the help. What? Sorry, guys. Hey, um, what's the minimum PowerShell version for Simplex? I'm sorry. Say again. Minimum PowerShell version for Simplex. Uh, three. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, that's one of the other limitations that I didn't really um, really talk about. I've, I've actually there's a version of Simplex in the gallery right now. Um, let me see if this works. Just, you know, of course not. Um, the uh, there's a version of Simplex in the gallery. It's it's a bit old. Yay! It's a bit old, but um, I'm actually having trouble right now with WMF five and drives. Like they kind of disappear, and I haven't figured out why yet. And it's something I'm doing. I'm pretty sure it's something I'm doing. But um, but yeah, so I'm 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 reneging on updating that package because that one seems to work okay. Um, I'm just I'm trying to figure out where the where the issue lies. I'm just haven't gotten around to figuring it out. But yeah, so PowerShell three and above is what it supports. Um, and again, that that will also vary. I think you need .NET Framework 4.0. Yeah. So uh, these are the resources I was referencing inside of the talk. Excuse me. So Simplex is available on my GitHub account. Uh, script That's provider. Everything you just showed. I'm sorry. Everything you just showed is the Simplex to GitHub. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything. All the examples are on GitHub. Okay. Uh, everything, um, and there's ac there's actually more examples than I showed you uh, available there as well. So, uh, script provider, Oshin script provider is uh, on Codeplex. Uh, P2F, we talked about a little bit. It's also available on GitHub, and then the PowerShell SDK is down there at the bottom, um, which I should have come up with a shorter URL, but I didn't. So you're welcome. Uh, all right, any other questions? Yeah, and that's that's exactly the point, right? Um, yeah. So the, the question is, you can you can dir dash recurse like at the root of that simplex node, and would just go through everything that's in there, like all of the script nodes and the other provider nodes that are proxied in there, and, and yeah, and that's exactly what I use it for, right? So I don't, you know, I don't remember where my IIS logs live. I just don't. Uh, so I have a simplex provider that has logs, you know, whack IIS. And then also under logs, I have application logs and event logs. And I do, I just say, get all the things 
right? DIR logs dash recurse and find the things that have this message in it, right? Uh, and it gets tricky. You got to have some homogeneity between the objects there because you know sometimes it's called message, sometimes it's just text, and you got to figure that out. <laughs> but again, that effort is minimal in comparison to trying to do it the other way. Right. But yeah, that's exactly what I use it for. It's like I, I don't know where it is. Just you, you find it for me, right? Just you, you go do the work, and then and then tell me what the answer is. So, all right. All right. Well, we, we got five minutes. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? The hair, maybe? What? In that situation you were just talking about, if you do recursive search and you're getting back different object types and you pipe that to, say, format table, are you going to follow the same format that would issue the PowerShell has where as soon as the type changes, everything else is going to format yep. list? Yeah, there's no way around that. Yeah, the formatting system is completely removed from, from all of this. So, And in fact, you'll notice there's some quirks, too. Like if I certain versions of the registry provider, when you mount them inside of simplex, and you, like the things don't look right. You know, like some of the properties just d disappear, and I don't know why. And I think I've looked into it, but I think it's got something to do with um, it's like trying to reference the entire path, and simplex isn't cooperating or something. I don't know. But again, eighty percent, whatever, whatever. You can search it. You're done. So. Anybody else? Nope. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you all for coming. Stop before I...